Today we are going to be watching one of the most iconic, most underrated, most spectacular movies I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Today we are going to be watching none other than the infamous movie from 2012, Chronicle. Now, whether you want to say it's infamous or just famous, that's up to you. But to me, I feel like a lot of people don't know what this movie is unless you're in a very niche part of the internet. Um, and a boy. I feel like boys really know the movie Chronicle, but I'm here to change that and let the girls know about Chronicle because it's one of the finest movies I've ever seen. It changed the way my brain worked when I watched it and I really wanted to share my opinions and my thoughts on it with you guys because I feel like no one has really talked about this within the YouTube mo movie commentary scene and I wanted to be the first one to do it because I'm special. Shout out to all my Chronicle fans in 2024. You know I love you baby mamas. I'm stalking and I'm lurking your pages. Andrew? Dad, it is 7.30 in the a.m. and you are Listen, you don't That is a huge camera. It just like boggles my mind that like they used to film their found footage movies and the camera that they are using through the found footage is humongous. It's a humongous camcorder that they were carrying around through the entire movie. Like that kills me. That actually like, I'm like, your, your arm hurts, your shoulder hurts. It's not vlogging, it's not an iPhone. It's a ginormous camcorder. So the movie follows Andrew who has a complicated relationship with his father. His father is abusive, verbal and physically and his mom is actually suffering from an illness she's uh, slowly passing away throughout the movie and so you go through the turmoil of Andrew dealing with wanting to escape his family but also not wanting to leave his mom alone with his dad and the dad also struggling with not only his alcohol abuse but also paying the medical bills for having his wife on hospice oh god get out of the way this movie has a very Twilight aesthetic to it. Like if Twilight was a found footage film, oh my God, someone needs to make that. A vampire found footage film. I love that. I love mixing supernatural and something more realistic and grounded like found footage. I think it is delectable, delicious, and um, I want to eat it every single day for the rest of my life. He is so weird. We have to talk about like whoever is like the main focus of a found footage film is inherently a weirdo because who- This is gonna sound very ironic that I say this. Who films themselves doing everything. We found the craziest shit. We gotta get it on tape. Uh, it's not. What's up, man? You okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm Andrew. Okay. Steve. Michael B. Jordan. Everyone's crush. Everyone's crush. In 2012, when this movie came out, he was everyone's crush. You can't deny that. Because look at him. Look at his straight teeth and bright smile. You can't get any better than that. And he's just got like a charisma to him. He's got such like a charming charisma. And of course, that's his character. His character, Steve, is supposed to be the popular boy, the popular guy that's very sweet and charismatic and has a good morality to him. But in everything Michael B. Jordan's in, he's just so beautiful, right? Or I, I, am I wrong? Am I wrong? If, I, if, that, if that makes me wrong, then you can, if, if loving Michael B. Jordan is illegal, then you can... Take me to jail, take me away, because I, I don't want to live any way else. So basically what happens is this movie then starts to follow a very similar plotline to Power Rangers. Basically they find this hole and they go into it and something happens within the hole and then they end up developing supernatural powers from it. Very, very similar to Power Rangers, but no girls. Power Rangers without girls. You could say it's a downgrade. I miss when boys played around with dirt. What happened to boys playing around in dirt and holes? Now all they want to do is smoke grape juice flavored vape and game what happened to playing with dirt like real men do and developing supernatural telekinesis powers. I don't know, what happened to real men? This is boys will be boys. So, so they go into the hole as boys will do. Boys will be boys. And if you are a boy, go, let's start making boys go back into dirt holes. No, Matt, let's just get this over with. Oh. Holy shit. Matt, I'm not kidding, I can't breathe. Andrew's such like a baby boy. The way he like 
speaks he's like come on guys please i like, can't breathe and like he's valid for that like i'd be the same way i'd be like i don't want to go i literally want to go guys it's not freaking funny anymore so they find these like crystals in the cave that start like changing colors and it's making the camera like glitch the f out and they start like bleeding from their holes and then it abruptly cuts to them in normal world in the normal world out of the tunnel nothing happened and michael b jordan shows up oh, oh, no. oh, shit. He is freaky. Like, Dane DeHaan is freaky. Like, when you see him controlling a ball, suddenly I'm, like, really freaking scared. But look at this shot. The found footage with the telekinesis working. It is so grounded, and it looks so good. I love it. I love it so much. I think it is so brilliant. And I think, you know, for 2012, I think it looks great. I wasn't expecting some amazing CGI. But I love how grounded the storyline is of the boys playing with their powers. That's what I like about it. I wasn't looking for a great CGI within this movie, but I was looking for a grounded story of supernatural powers with young teenage boys, and that's what I got from it. Boys will be boys playing with Legos with their telekinesis powers. That's what I love to hear. That's what I like to see. And basically what happens next is that they go to the hole that they once went in, and it is now covered up. Gasp, why is it covered up? And why were they the only ones allowed to go in there? And then a police officer shows up and he's like, you guys can't be here. And they're like, the ground's unstable. We're taping the whole thing off. Um, it's unstable. I was just in that mother freaking hole. Like not even 24 hours ago. What do you mean it's unstable? I was just underneath there. And anyways, then they just continue doing boy things. So, so like, what's up with your dad? What's his story? What does he do? Um, my dad's a firefighter. This kills me because he's like this. Like, he's literally like this. He, like, was a firefighter. As they're talking about his dad, he's like, Yeah, my dad used to be a firefighter. Like, he's weird. I can't, as, as much as this movie goes on, like, you cannot sympathize with him because he is weird. And maybe that's why Dane DeHaan's career didn't take off because, in a sense, his character of this movie is not a hero it's a villain and and from the very beginning it's a villain because filming everything from the start is already kind of off and this is coming from someone that does it for a job but still i don't pull out a big old camcorder and start filming people without their consent especially when I'm having deep talks. And then throughout the movie, we see them start developing their powers, becoming a little bit more uh, relaxed with them, a little bit more effortless with what they're doing. They're skipping stones. They're, they're doing things with a lot more ease than they were before. And it's starting to become just something that they randomly do throughout the day. They're not really trying to prove anything. And trust Andrew's filming every single second of it. It's just so cool. It is so cool. It gets me hype. It gets me energized. It makes me feel like I'm one of the guys. I get what the heck? I get so excited when I watch it. It makes me it makes me hype for it because it's cool. They're boys and they're just like moving cars with their brain. Today's video is sponsored by Care Of. Care Of makes personalized daily supplement packs. I know in the new year for me, one thing that I wanted to get on track was taking better care of myself. And with that comes taking different supplements to help my body throughout the day. And the biggest issue with that is going to the store and picking and choosing what supplement you need and what vitamin you need for the specific issues that you're having. It is all very confusing and you're buying entire bottles of stuff without knowing what it is and then it might be a waste if it doesn't target exactly what you wanted to target and then you have a bunch of bottles lying around and you end up not taking them after a while because it's just too much now care of takes care of this issue by having you take a short little quiz where you can input everything that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis whether you're lacking a lot of energy whether you're having a hard time falling asleep whether you're having a lot of gut problems you can input all this information into their short little quiz and what it'll do is it'll come out with a result of a customized 
supplement pack for you to take every single day. They know exactly what you need and it comes in these little packs. These are the best things ever. I was so shocked when it came to my door. It comes in this pre-made box so you can stick it in your cabinet and you just pull them out day by day. The great thing about this is that first of all, already made for you. Love that. My bane of my existence is opening bottles to get supplements out because I don't want to open seven bottles every single morning. And also, I don't want to make a little pack every single at the beginning of every single week. I would much rather have it ready for me. And not to mention, look at this thing. If you don't have time to take it in the morning, pop it in your bag, take it anytime you want. And you know, hey, if this isn't open, I haven't taken my freaking supplements. Amazing. I love this. And it also says, hi, Trinity. I love customized things. I love it when something says my name. That's the best thing ever. A pair of daily vitamin packs come in a plant-based compostable film, so it lowers the impact on the environment while you have your little daily supplements. It can lower the impact on the environment, but not lower the quality or safety of your products. Care of also has an app where you can input and track how you're feeling on the supplements that you're taking and adjust accordingly with how you're affected by the current supplements that you're on. Honestly, this little pack helps them simplify my daily routine by a thousand percent by a thousand percent there's nothing better than going into my cabinet and just picking out my little pack there's nothing more than I love than pulling out a pack and just taking all my pills at once it makes it so easy a lot of the times I get overwhelmed with a lot of supplements that I'm taking but with this one I've been really liking the probiotic plus gut health take care of quiz to find out what's recommended for you and use my code trend 50 to get 50% off your subscription today or you can scan the QR code on the screen right now thank you Kara for sponsoring today's video and keeping me from like why would andrew do that he could have literally put the brakes on the car could have just broke his car he, you could have just not drowned the car maybe like why does he have the camera why do you have the camera at this point you're saying with the camera in your freaking hand i can help i can get him out i can get him out this is why i fucking hate andrew this is why andrew is a fucking piece of shit because he does that okay fine you do it you make a slip whatever it happens the freaking matt didn't pull the gum out of the guy's mouth he ended up hitting him and pushing him into the stand it happens they don't know the extent of their powers fine why wouldn't you try to go in and save the people that are drowning why wouldn't you if you say if you if, if it's not this bad thing then why aren't you going in to help them why do you still have your camera and why are the only people going in to save them the two people that didn't do it i don't know andrew there's not much I can say to you right now. What You're putting it on camera. You're making proof because you're stupid and I hate you. He's such a dick. Andrew, look at me. You put a guy in the hospital. How do you feel about that? You hurt somebody. Not only did you do it, you also had no idea why they were doing the right thing by not only saving him, but also calling the police. What is wrong with him? Andrew, I don't think is it a necessarily a villain but i think he is very lost and also too detached from his emotions and i think that's what this camera kind of represents throughout the entire thing earlier he said that like the camera and the barrier that he it creates is something that he almost likes but I think that also is a barrier within everything within his life, a barrier between people and his own emotions, which makes his lack of empathy for people that he hurts so low. So basically when they're like flying in the air and it's like a really crazy like shot, they almost get hit by an airplane and then they like fall out of the sky and like Andrew saves Steve when they're like falling because like Steve couldn't control himself like in the air um and so they're like really grateful for Andrew they're like yes Andrew like they basically forgiven everything that Andrew has done you know as one does and this is where like you finally start to see them using their powers in a way that kind of defies a lot of morals um because now they're defying what, I mean, they're already defying what like natural humans can do, but like being in the air is like kind of crazy. And they just looked really funny. I mean, before this, I barely even hung out with Matt and he's my cousin. We were close when we were little, but- Anybody getting like a little bit like of a lover vibe from like Steve and Andrew? 
Like, I feel like Steve is what Andrew wants to be. Popular friends, loving family, academic achievements. And Andrew is envious of that, but also kind of attracted to it. I feel like it's like kind of giving lover. And that's not a joke. I'm not saying that as a joke. I'm saying that like for real. So Andrew goes to the talent show and he kind of slays. He like struts on a tightrope and he's like kind of slaying. And this kind of is like his beginning of finally gaining confidence. Like, so he has the moment where he pushes the pickup truck off the side of the road and he loses a lot of his confidence and he's back to being like isolated out of the friend group. And then after spending more time with them and f learning how to fly and saving his friend's life and then going to the talent show, he begins to get his confidence back. So he's l he started at rock bottom, gains confidence, loses it, and then gains a major boost within confidence, like h over halfway over the film. <laughs> Andrew, you're literally mean. Why would you do that? We're supposed to fly around the world together, don't you? Do you remember that? You think I'm talking stop, to you stop. about? But like the fact that they're having this conversation up in the air during a thunderstorm is like so funny. <laughs> That with the camera is crazy. Everything is crazy, but that with the camera is so crazy. Best fucking character of the fucking movie get dies. Best fucking character of the movie, Michael B. Jordan, the freaking hottest character of the movie, freaking dies. It's like you want me to have a miserable time. And not only that, he's the most popular kid in school. That's what they're all saying too. They're like the most the best fucking kid in class fucking died. Are you kidding me? It's horrible. Cause I wanna have a conversation don't tell me with you, what to okay? do, man. You can't tell me what to do, man. Don't you ever tell me. Keep me shut it off of me. Are you joking right now? Is this is this a joke to you? He thinks he's like a super villain or something. He's like, you wanna you wanna like fucking play with me? I'm gonna film you. <laughs> you wanna have a conversation with me? I'm just gonna film you. L L L. You can't be honest about anything because I'm gonna film you while we talk. Why don't you just tell me what happened, Andrew? That is great. I. <laughs> Andrew, stop it. The way he like lit. Like, he's crazy. He's so stupid. I, I lost control and, and I'm so sorry. This thing is just becoming a part of me now and I don't. But he's saying it as if like, they all don't also have the same powers. Like it's not even something that he has an isolated feeling within. Pause. I think what's interesting about this is that Andrew chooses so heavily to isolate himself from the two friends that he, you know, made during this time. And a big part of that is like, obviously, you know, he feels different from them. He feels like he's in a different light than them within school. The thing that ties them together is something that they're all simultaneously experiencing that no one else can experience. It's truly a thing that only them three can experience and something that brings them together. And he chooses to still make himself as different as possible. And even in the correlation to the powers, he thinks that it's like only happening to him. Almost chooses to be different in that sense where even in the one thing that they all relate on, he's like, but it's different for me. Like, like smaller animals can't feed on us because of weapons and stuff, right? A lion does not feel guilty when it kills a gazelle, right? You do not feel guilty when you squash a fly. And I think that means something. What in the world? I just think that really means something. Girl, what? Pause. What does it mean? Quickly, quickly, tell me what it means right now. In simple sentences, quickly, tell me what it fucking means. That's really cool though. Regardless of anything he says and how crazy he is, that shot is very cool to me and I really like it. So thanks. So basically after Andrew and Matt had their fight, Andrew goes to get meds for his mom and realizes that there's $750 for only next day delivery. So he decides to make a plan to basically get the meds himself. How does he plan on doing that? I don't know. It doesn't matter who it is. Just give me all your money or else. Or else? Yeah. Andrew. You got Andrew's broke ass backpack on. Oh, you got... <laughs>
Like, that is so funny. Like, why would he say that? Like, your broke-ass backpack. How do people recognize me for my broke-ass backpack? That's so mean. <laughs> and he's recording all of it. He's like, not only am I the apex predator, I'm also a director. I'm a filmmaker. I love cinema. He's a cinephile, if you think about it. That, that is like literally $50, so. You did all of that for $50, Andrew. Go rob a bank and get at max $4,000 because the most anyone ever gets from a bank robbery is at max $4,000. So please don't try to rob a bank because you're not gonna get that much money. Why do I know that? Because I like facts. <laughs> He does not have to injure these people. The fact that he like does not have to injure th these people, because he can do all this without l injuring them because he has powers, but he chooses to injure them. He chooses to hurt them when he does not have to. Andrew, why would you do that? And it's switching from his camera point of view to the CCTV instead because he's not filming everything. I love it. So basically when Andrew blows, like literally blows out the room that he's in, the hospital room with his dad in it, he, it Matt like gets a bloody nose at a birthday party that he's at and literally is like what the fuck is wrong with Andrew and so he it makes Casey go to the hospital with him because he's like there's something wrong with Andrew there's something wrong with Andrew right now we need to go Andrew! Andrew, stop! Andrew's fucking crazy for no reason to for a reason and Andrew's doing this because his mom died because his mom died okay he's doing it because his mom died <laughs> it looks so bad. Okay, Apex Predator. Okay, Apex Predator. Apex Predator, remember that you threw up on a girl when you were trying to get down with her. We remember that. Oh, we. Andrew, I'm stronger than all Andrew, of this. He looks crazy saying all this. We could be family. Andrew. Andrew, look at me. Look at me, Andrew. You're not like this. Don't. What? I'm an apex predator. Bit. <laughs> he is so- The fact that he said that. I'm an apex predator. You could've just done it, but you had to say I'm an apex predator. Cause there's something wrong with you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I love how graphic it is. I think like the amount of crazy shit that happens. He just ran him over with a bus in the middle of the sky. Are you kidding me? They're literally throwing cars at each other right now. It is bonkers. It's like, why are they already shooting him? He's like literally torn apart the city. Shoot him. <laughs> Dude, it looks so cool though! I know Angie's crazy, but it looks so cool! I love the visuals! I love the visuals! I love the CCTV! I love it, I love it, I love it! I love the like, helicopter footage! He's so crazy! He's so crazy! <laughs> and like, Matt can't help but just watch him literally fucking destroy everything! He's literally destroying everyone. Innocent people. And he's looking at him as he has to, he has to kill his cousin. He literally has to kill his cousin. He screams at him to stop doing what he's doing because he's, he's like, if you don't, I'm gonna have to kill you. Because these motherfucking police won't just shoot him. I, a police, would you, do please do the honor of killing my cousin because I don't want, I don't want to have to do it. But you made me kill my own cousin, you stupid fucking cops. What the fuck are you talking about? Best fucking movie ever though. That scene is lit. That scene is so fucking lit. Guess what? You made it. I hate to say it, I really do, but it just doesn't seem like he's actually in the Tibetan mountains right now.
Oh, he leaves his camera there for Andrew. Best fucking movie ever. The movie basically ends with Matt talking to his, the camera and saying a farewell to Andrew. I think that the movie is obviously flawed. I will not say that it is not flawed. Is it so entertaining to me? Yes, but I think there are so many like parts of the dialogue and storylines that could have been done better. I think that for Matt and Casey, I think that like it's a very lackluster story between them that's happening and I think if they embellished that more and had that wrap up of them going off to do her journaling together and her continuing on filming or her releasing the footage of uh, that Andrew filmed in a documentary or something and that being her project of like showcasing what actually happened. Dane DeHaan really does a mix of things. I love him in this movie, I do, but I think he does, you know, overacted some parts. But do I love him? Of course. Do I love seeing him, you know, go too far? Yes. Do I want a remake of this movie? Yes, a thousand percent. I think it's so good. I hope that like in 10 years or something that we get a remake of Chronicle because I feel like with, you know, a little bit of a rewrite, with a little bit more complexity to some of the characters, especially with Andrew's family dynamic, I think that they try to but the dad at the end of the day is just shitty. Like he's just shitty because he loves his wife more than he loves his son. And you don't get that until the very last bit is that he just loves his wife more than he loves his son. We see Andrew start to take on habits of his father and the, you know, inhabiting behaviors of his abusive household that he lived in growing up and how that contributes to his need to be the apex predator, the need to be the strongest person because he was never the strongest person growing up in all aspects of life, whether that's in his own home, whether that's in school, whether that's with his friends. And I think I still stand by what I said earlier that like he willingly chooses to separate himself from his two best friends even though they're experiencing the exact same thing he is. I love this movie. I would love to know what you guys thought of it. Let me know if you liked this movie, you hated it. I know when it came out, it wasn't all that well received. I think it had a very mixed opinion on whether people liked it or whether people hated it. And it didn't really do that well, obviously, because there's no Chronicle 2, because not only did it not perform that well, it also, you know, the director said that he don't, he wouldn't make a Chronicle 2 because that kind of defeats the purpose of Chronicle because Chronicle is kind of this um, cautionary tale of powers. And why would you make another movie about powers if the whole purpose of the first movie was to show you how bad powers are? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps out my videos. It shares it with more people and just lets me know what videos that you guys like more than others. Make sure you guys subscribe so you can see every single upload from me and turn on the notifications bell so you guys can be one of the first people to comment because I usually am responding and hearting comments within the first hour of posting. And follow me on all my social medias, links to them will be all in the description. I post a lot on all my socials asking you guys what you want to see, so if you want to have an opinion on what I post next, make sure you guys go follow me. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!